Hi guys, it's Ben Heath from Lead Guru, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the fact that Facebook Audience Insights has gone. Facebook have retired their Audience Insights tool. It was a fantastic tool. We used to use it all the time to find high quality Facebook targeting options, but that's no longer available. So there's new ways that you need to do things, new ways of finding Facebook targeting options that are likely to work really well for your business. So I'm gonna talk through and walk you through in this video how we're now approaching Facebook targeting research, how we're now finding targeting options, and our approach to Facebook targeting now that one of the big Facebook targeting tools has disappeared. So I'm in an example ad account here. I'm in Ads Manager, and I'm going to click on these three little lines on the left, and I'm going to um, show you uh, what, where you're taken if you try and go onto Audience Insights. Now, when you're watching this video, this may have been removed, but you can see there's the various options on the left-hand side, and you can see that Audience Insights under Analyze and Report is actually still an option, which seems somewhat surprising. But if you click on it, you don't come through to the old audience insights tool. Instead, you come through to this new Facebook insights tool that has an audience section. Okay. So don't think that oh, audience insights still exists because when you click through to it, this is a completely different thing. This is not Facebook audience insights. This is Facebook insights. And within Facebook insights, you can see there's some other options up here. There is an audience section. Okay. So if you try and use it, this is where you're likely to, uh, to end up. Now, Facebook said that they were going to use this as a replacement for Audience Insights, and you can see that by if you try and click through to Audience Insights, they automatically redirect you here. Is this a good replacement for the old Facebook Audience Insights tool? The answer is definitely no. So I'll quickly show you what we used to be able to do and, and how it doesn't work in this tool, because if you're trying to use this and use it as an example, I'll see why it doesn't really deliver the best results. So um, you want to be on this potential audience section. That's how we used to use Facebook Audience Insights. You can see the potential audience size is 49 million. That would be because it's defaulted to the UK because I'm based in, in the UK. And you can see various locations and things like that. And you can see down here this top pages section. Okay, and you can see if I hover over, these top pages are the Facebook pages liked by this potential audience and this metric is estimated. So what they're saying here is that out of this 49 million people that are the Facebook and Instagram users aged 18, 65 plus in the UK, um, these are the locations or the, the largest locations. And then these are the pages they're most likely to um, like, be interested in, etc. Now, we used to use a very similar tool to this in Facebook's Audience Insights and this information, I saw this and I was like, you know what, this might still work really well. This is this is quite exciting. So what you want to then do is come in and add a filter. Uh, we'll just stick with the United Kingdom, but we'll pop it in to make it more clear. You can see nothing changed there. Um, and then let's say we are, you know, say I'm advertising my business, right? Roughly our age range, let me get rid of that, is m most likely to be 25 plus to say around 55. We often leave it open, but Either way, we're going to be male and female. And then say we wanted to add in an interest like social media marketing. Okay. And you're thinking, fantastic, this works so far, just like Facebook Audience Insights used to do. Um, and then if we scroll down, you will see that the top pages have barely changed. They are not highly relevant to our target audience. And that's what we used to do. We used to pop an interest into here, into social media marketing. You can see it has affected the audience size. We're gonna add 2.7 million, so it has affected the data. Um, and that would then produce a, a, a list of a lot of Facebook pages, a lot of interest options that are highly relevant that had what they called a high affinity score. So if someone liked, was interested in social media marketing, they were 500 times more likely to like a certain page. And that's where you got your targeting ideas from and targeting options from. But if we look down here, you will see that these are not related to social media marketing. Lad Bible, Amazon, Tasty, Unilad, BBC News. I mean, these are very, you know, Will Smith, Eminem, these are very, very generic targeting options that, and it's because of the wording, it's not an affinity score. It's not, if you like this, if you're interested in social media marketing, you are 500 times more likely to like this as well, this other page. It's the pages liked by this potential audience. Well, the issue is that obviously, a huge proportion of people on Facebook and Instagram like Lad Bible, right? Or like Amazon.co.uk are interested in it. it. It just, none of these options here are specific, not even Facebook app, you might think it is, but, but it isn't. That's again, gonna be generic. None of this information here is specific to people that are interested in social media marketing. And because of that, if you try and come in and use the new Facebook Insights tool 
as a Facebook Audience Insights replacement, it's just not got the same info, okay? So if that's not how we're going to find great Facebook targeting options um, in a non-Facebook Audience Insights world, which we're now in, how are we gonna go about doing it? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back into um, Ads Manager, and believe it or not, we are going to use Facebook's Ads Manager as our place to find targeting options that we can use and that should, at least some of them, deliver great results for our business. And that might sound a little bit basic, but I'm gonna talk you through it now as to why we do it that way and what we're really looking to do um, as our end objective, because it's a little bit different, okay? So um, I'm just gonna quickly create an example campaign just to very quickly show you this. Let's go with conversions because basically always doing that. Create a quick campaign, and then we're gonna to jump to the ad set level. And then what we're going to do very simply is see what Facebook will provide um, in the detailed targeting section. So come down here into detailed targeting and we're gonna start searching for things that are related to our business, okay? Start searching for things that you know are highly relevant, okay? So I play six side football, soccer, for those of you not you know in the UK, um, really enjoy it, right? And I'm gonna use that sort of industry as an example here for how you would go about finding great Facebook targeting options. So let's say I was in that industry. Let's say I sold um, socks or boots or balls themselves or training equipment or um, kit, you know, like uh, apparel, jerseys and things like that, right? And um, let's say I was in that base. So what, first thing I do, come in here, I pop in soccer, okay? And you can see we're starting to generate loads of various options. You know, we've got Major League Soccer because soccer is like more the American word. Um, so we've got Major League Soccer as an interest. Um, indoor soccer. Oh, what? I play six sides, which is indoor. Fantastic. That could be a great targeting option. Um, soccer AM, that's like a TV show all about, all about football. Um, beach soccer. All sorts of... Look at all these, all these options that you're coming up with. Okay you would wanna go and make a note of all these options, all the options that come up that you think are relevant. To some extent here, you're gonna to have to use your instinct and your knowledge of the industry to go, you know, okay, I'm selling beach soccer. No, I'm selling boots. People playing bare feet on the beach, right? That's not a good one. But indoor soccer, okay, I sell boots that are specifically, you know, they're like AstroTurf type boots. They're specifically designed for indoor playing. Fantastic, that would be a great option. Um, all that sort of stuff. So you make a list. And then you go through with some of the other terms that it might be talked about. Um, you know, you could football, you've got football association, you've got, obviously with football, you need to be careful with the American versus English version, but it depends where you're, where you're advertising, of course. You could have in here football boots, you know, football boot is an interest. You could have uh, football ball, I imagine is going to come up with something. Yeah, football ball, um, football team, football player. You could go with, again, soccer ball. See what comes up. Association Football Soccer. And you can see that if you just search around the terms, um, let's go with some other stuff. See what comes up. And some of the things you pop in aren't going to come up with anything. So shin pads are something you wear to play football or soccer most of the time. That's not come up as an option. Absolutely fine. Um, so you can see you could have, for example, maybe soccer gloves. No, that's not gonna come in. That's what a goalkeeper would, would use, football gloves, no. And this is the process. What I'm, this might sound a little bit messy and not polished like I'd like to create most of my videos, but that's because this process is a little bit messy and it is more natural and not quite as polished as, as usual. But this is what we're going through. And what you're looking to do is search, you might search for 10 to 20 terms in and around your industry and whatever it is that you sell. And then you may take some of the ones that you find. So we found indoor soccer, right? Okay, so we've got um, indoor soccer, you've got soccer fans, people who are really engaged with that sort of content. You know, look at the description on soccer fans, right? Interacted with content related to football, US soccer, five or more times over the last 90 days. Okay, maybe that's a great audience. People who play the game and buy products, probably also follow the professional game and are interested in stuff like that. Okay, that could be a great option. So you go through 10 to 20 different terms, you're gonna compile a list, I would say of at least 10 quality targeting options that you can sort of intuitively say, oh yeah, that's that's good for our audience. That's pretty representative. And there's gonna be all sorts of ones you didn't expect to come up and all sorts of things like that. 
That is the process we go through initially. There's more added to it in a minute. Next thing you wanna do is check the size of these audiences. And all I'm doing at this point is discounting ones with tiny audiences. That we're just, okay, it's too small. I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm not really worried if something's too big, the upper end. So if you look at soccer fans high engagement and we've got 70 million, 71 million. Remember this is worldwide, okay? So if I was to pop this in for just the UK, uh, and we have got just the UK selected. Uh, if I remove detailed targeting, we can see what the audience size is. It's 2.2 million. Lovely audience size for the UK. That's absolutely fantastic. Remember, that's just so 2.2 million in the UK, 71 million worldwide. But if, and we may not come up with any options because, of course, football, soccer is such a hugely followed thing. We're trying to find something now that's... Actually, this might be an interesting. If I put in Major League Soccer in the UK, oh, I'm still 1.1 million. Okay, that's still much larger than I was expecting. But what I'm saying is with a lot of industries, you will do this and you will find some that are just too small. that just aren't going to work. See if we can find a small one. There we go, Soccer Mom. Not necessarily what you target. Anyway, okay, perfect example. That comes out at 59,000. Way too small. That's not something I want to target to the whole of the UK. I'm looking for 250,000 minimum, maybe half a million minimum, something along those lines. I've got another video about ideal Facebook audience size, so I'll include a link uh, in the video description below. But this is the, the, the sort of thing we're doing. This is sort of process, okay? Then you've got, say, you might have anywhere between six and 20 targeting options that you're excited about that you think can really work. Then what you do, is you go through and you test them. So you you create one ad set for each interest, behavior, whatever you come up with here, targeting option, one in each. If you put them all into one ad set or multiple into one ad set, the big issue with that is that you get a blended average. You don't see, let's say you've got four in here, you won't know which one of the four produces the best results, which one of the four produces the worst results because they're all lumped in together. So the results are a blended average, right? If you separate out each interest or each uh, behavioral targeting option into its own ad set, you can then look at that data in a few weeks time or a few days time, depending on how much you're spending and go, okay, out of these you know, 12 that we've tested, three perform really well. So let's just target those three. Let's get rid of the others. Super, super valuable information to have. The testing process is how you do this. Now, you don't want to test too many all at once. I would test a maximum of five ad sets at any one time. But you could test five this week, five next week, five the week after. You can get through these really quickly to find out which performs best. Again, that, the, those time frames do depend on your budget, right? So short, smaller budgets, you need to leave, leave it longer. Larger budgets, you can, you can narrow the time frames down. Um, but that's how you go through the process. Now, this might sound a little bit unexciting, a little bit basic if you're used to doing more complex research with audience insights. But here's why it's not such a big deal. And that's because, and this is something we do as an agency and I would strongly encourage you to do as well, when you're advertising to cold audiences, so things like, um, what do we have as some fantastic options before? Let's just pop, um, no results found. I don't believe you. <laughs> By the way, good example of Facebook is super buggy. So let's go with the soccer fans, um, high engagement, that high content engagement. That sounds like a, like a great option. Um, when you are using something like this and you're testing a whole bunch of different options, what you are looking to do as soon as possible is incorporating lookalike audiences. And lookalike audiences based off of your previous customers are nearly always going to be the best options. If you're not familiar with lookalike audiences, I'll include a link um, in the video description below to a really detailed tutorial all about, it's like the ultimate Facebook lookalike audience tutorial. It shows you how to create them all, shows you which ones deliver the best results, all that sort of stuff. But the best results are almost certainly going to be seen from lookalike audiences. And once you've got say 200 purchases in your account or 200 leads generated, whatever it is that you're optimizing for, switching over to a lookalike audience based off of those people that have taken that action is almost certainly gonna produce better results than basically any interest, behavior, or demographic targeting option you can find. So without audience insights, you might find it a little bit harder to find high quality targeting options, which might make your results slightly worse pre lookalike audience phase, but depending on how much you're spending, how many conversions you generate, that might be a very short period of time and then you're gonna primarily be operating off lookalike audiences. You don't need to always operate off lookalike audiences once you have the 100 plus customers or 100 plus leads or whatever it is that you can base a lookalike audience off. You may still run some interest targeting options if they perform really well, but don't think that 
this is the only getting this right this detailed targeting section right is the only way to facebook advertising success very very often we end up with a situation where we're advertising to warm audiences and then we're advertising to two or three different lookalike audiences are cold options maybe an interest in there as well if an interest is performed particularly well but we're not reliant on it by any means on this section here it's more of a getting things going in the beginning so that we can then use the best data possible to produce the best possible results okay so pretty straightforward that's the process is it annoying that audience insights has gone yes is there anything we can do about it absolutely not the facebook insights tool the new one is not fit for purpose this is the best way to do it um, go ahead and spend a bit of time you can still find great options and then you can go on um, as i said to to bigger and better things with lookalike audiences. Make sure you check out this, that, that tutorial, by the way, on lookalike audiences. If you're not familiar, down below, I can I can strongly recommend. Okay, hopefully that's been useful. Before you go, a couple of things I want to mention. The first is our Facebook advertising services. So my company, Lead Guru, is a specialist Facebook and Instagram advertising agency. We create, manage, and optimize campaigns for our clients um, in all sorts of different industries. And if you want better results, if you don't want to be finding your own targeting options, or if you're thinking, you know, I'm sure we could get better results from our Facebook and Instagram ads, we can almost certainly help you achieve that. So um, what you can do is there'll be another link in the video description below where you can click through to our website, book a free call with one of my team members. No obligation. We can just find out more about your business. You can find out more about how we work. Um, and yeah, we can explore potentially working together. We do require that people have at least a 3K budget or about to have a 3K minimum budget per month um, for them to be able to work with us. We just can't really work with companies with less than that. But if you do meet that criteria, go ahead and book a call and, and you know, maybe we'll be, uh, we'll be working together. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment below, I get to most of the comments on my channel. I um, spend a lot of time doing that, so I will do my best to, to answer your questions. Um, I can't guarantee it, obviously, sometimes there's too many, but, but if I can, I will. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, yeah. Best of luck with your Facebook ad campaigns, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.